Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Game Changer. I'm Mariam Zia. In today's program, we will be exploring the economic, diplomatic, and other avenues of collaboration between Pakistan and Brazil. Uh, when we talk about Brazil, of course, this was one of the first countries in South America that recognized Pakistan in 1948. And of course, when we talk about Brazil, it is one of the seventh largest economies of the world. Uh, there's a huge potential when we talk about economic relations between Pakistan and Brazil, uh, especially uh, when we talk about different sectors. Agriculture is one of the sectors where there's a lot of potential. We will be talking about uh, this potential in today's program. Of course, uh, although the geographical uh, distance between both the countries poses uh, certain challenges, uh, but when we talk about potential, uh, there is a lot that can be done. We will be talking about all the avenues of uh, uh, area, all the avenues and areas in which both countries can collaborate. To discuss this and more, we are joined in the studios by expert international affairs, uh, Dr. Zia Shamsi. Welcome to the program. We are also joined by Dr. Zafar Nawaz Jaspal, who is expert international affairs. Welcome to the program. And we are joined online by uh, economist and expert international affairs, Dr. Stan Javed. Welcome to the program. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Zia Shamsi, let me start with you. When we talk about, uh, of course, Pakistan's relations with Brazil, um, how do you see the historical, uh, uh, you know, evolution of relations between the, both the countries, and what are some of the significant milestones that can you sh uh, that you can share with us? Thank you very much for uh, inviting me over. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Um, Brazil, uh, as you said, seventh largest economy is the sixth largest population. Rather, Pakistan has recently crossed it to become number five, um, is a very, very interesting country in the sense that it has a very large landmass, is the largest landmass in the uh, southern uh, America, South American region. Um, and the people are very interesting and enterprising. They are football lovers. They have a very uh, long and cherished history very rich in culture, very rich in cuisine, the coffee and everything, and uh, very, very friendly people. I've been, uh, I'm very fortunate to have visited Brazil, the city of Sao Paulo is, is one of the largest uh, in Brazil. Unfortunately, in last 75 years, Pakistan's relation with Brazil, though have always been very friendly, but they've not been uh, economically productive as should have been because of the population and the um, potential because brazil has a lot of potential in agriculture of course. sports and everything they are football lovers and we are football producers of i course. mean at least as far as i am concerned and uh, dr hasnan i am sure will throw some light on it from the economic point of view, at least football itself should have been exported to Brazil directly, directly of course, instead of through uh, FIFA tournaments. And uh, the do Brazil think, should have been more. Do you think geographical than... distance is one of the reasons, I don't think or so. there is less engagement on the diplomatic level, or uh, there is less exchange of uh, maybe political uh, delegations when we talk about Pakistan's relations with Brazil? In fact, in the globalized environment, now the distance does not matter. Mm. Uh, it is the engagement and the priorities of successive governments that they perhaps thought that it is too far. Although nothing is too far, it is in South of America. If we have a day to day relationship with the United States of America and perhaps with Canada also, why not with Brazil and Argentina? Of course. So, uh, Dr. Jaspal, um, what do you think that how the strategic and political dimensions, global dimensions have impacted the uh, diplomatic or bilateral relations between Pakistan and Brazil? I, I think that if we can review the Pakistan and Brazil relations, we find there is a sustainability since 1948. We cultivated a better relation, realizing that there, are, there is a potential. Mm -hmm. And now it's a one billion plus trade sort of a thing also. In that context, when we look about Brazil and in this interdependent world, definitely Brazil's economy is a rising economy. It's one of the biggest and one of the second in the hemisphere and in the southern America. So obviously having a good relation, trade relations with them, yeah, Brazil is a good market for us. And at the same time, it's a good, uh, you can say, a country from where we can learn a lot from Brazil, especially in the agriculture sector. Uh, Brazilians have been doing a marvelous in the agriculture sector, and we are also looking for 
revising our agriculture sector to make it more or uh, revolutionize our agricultural products and especially in the yields. Both states have another common, uh, you can say, challenge that is the climate change. Mm -hmm. Within this climate change, every state is now working how to address this transnational challenge. Of course, Brazil is in a different continent and we are in a different, but at the same time, we learn from each other's best practices with these kind of the things. Of course. Definitely, there are other areas which can be explored, like the defensive cooperation, especially in the military hardware. Uh, we, we can learn from them on a small arms and they can also learn from us in the other case. Right. There, th there's a lot of potential when we talk about different areas and we will be uh, talking in depth uh, about all these areas later in the program uh, about defense cooperation, about pharmaceutical agriculture industry as well. But when we talk about political engagements between the two countries, uh, do you think uh, the, uh, uh, that there is enough that is being done? And uh, uh, what about uh, the level of memoranda of understanding between the two countries uh, when we talk about the exchange of delegations at political and diplomatic front? I think that uh, the Diploma at the diplomatic front, the Brazilian representative here, the ambassador is very active. Similarly, Pakistan is there. Uh, but when when you have this question that uh, is it enough, in bilateral relation, nothing is enough. Mm. Always there is room for improvement and there is a uh, sort of thing. But one can say in the last three, four years, the developments took place, especially if you see during the COVID time and pandemic and even it in that time, our trade volume increases, increased. So keeping in mind that trend, I'm optimistic about the Brazil and Pakistan's relations or bilateral trade. Of course, uh, we are not a neighboring state. We are not from the one continent. As Shams, I was saying that in the technological or in the modern world, distance doesn't matter. But at the same time, we can say that it's a big outlet. And Brazil, if you see, it's a very significant, economically speaking. It's a part of BRICS. Of course. And in the BRICS, if we have a good relation with Brazil, if we have a over 70 years bilateral relations, China is there, we have a good relation. So with that, if there is a probability of the opening up or increasing the BRICS, you can see membership. One of can course, and part when we talk it. about Pakistan's relations with Brazil, there's a lot of potential when we talk about South-South cooperation because yes. both are the developing countries. Uh, both have kind of similar populations as well and maybe similar problems or challenges when we talk about poverty and other... Uh, developing states challenges and especially the South versus North discourse and even in the United Nations, Brazil is also very important from their region side. And when we talk about the new uh, expanding the veto power of the number of the countries of the having veto power in the United Nations Security Council. All, all these areas where we can cooperate. Of course, there's a lot of potential. And when we talk about BRICS and other uh, multilateral engagement, there's a lot of potential. But uh, let's talk about economic potential uh, of cooperation between the two countries. Dr. Sen, uh, of course, we know that Brazil is uh, seventh largest economies of the world. And this is very significant when we talk about Latin America. And of course, Pakistan has its own uh, significant position in this region. How do you see uh, that the economic relations between the two countries have evolved? over time so since from inception we have a good relation friendly relation but the friendly relation is not enough of course uh, I mean uh, we ignored the uh, uh, probably from the both side we ignore the economic side because if we have uh, seen the economic balance or the trade balance between the both countries it is just about the billions and in 2021 we haven't export any single penny to Brazil so uh, now the situation is changed and geopolitical impact is giving us the different way and different scenario which is very much important so if i uh, if i can see and which is very much important and most of the people think that why we are ta uh, talking about the brazil because now it is the time to uh, uh, i mean uh, to see the new ch changing environment, new changing dimension, new changing economic pivot. Right, and because diversify our foreign policy as different. well, of course. Exactly. So geopolitical situation may also be affecting the FDI flow into the country with the tension between China and United States, very much important. I'm telling you, now there is a, a tension between the China and uh, uh, United States. So ramping up Brazil has likely to be the beneficiary. The ben Brazil will be the most beneficiary area uh, uh, for, for, for the uh, export challenges. So the South American side, so China can, uh, uh, Brazil would be the best destination for the, uh, for the upcoming uh, trade uh, area. So 
uh, right. China would come over there, and I'm I'm completely agree with the Dr. Shamsi, whatever he says about the export and uh, uh, other things. But the greater U.S. scrutiny of the Chinese company acquisition has forced uh, Chinese company to look uh, elsewhere to target the including in Brazil. So sanction of the Russia have also likely fueled interest in the Brazil's energy industry, and which has been uh, far the largest recipient of the Chinese direct investment flow. But if we look at the, uh, I mean, the contraction of the Brazil economic uh, overview, we must have to understand that the uh, considering full 20, uh, 2022, the GDP grew at 2.9 percent, easy from, uh, I mean, easing from the 5 percent growth in 2021. So the service sector jumped from uh, 4.2 and until uh, uh, utilizes 10.1 percent, aimed uh, more favorable fees. Uh, while the manufacturing sector contracted 0.3, mining is 1.7 percent due to the lower iron ore interaction, and uh, farm sector went down point, uh, 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 about by 1.7 percent. So Brazil have a long struggling with the uh, public financial issues. So they have a same issue. So they they are now fully dependent on China. And let me tell you one more important thing: a weakening of the currency and. Reopening of the China have helped push export in the right direction, and however, export growth could slow from the uh, breakneck speed for some of these uh, tillman uh, subsidies. And uh, as export growth uh, uh, continued to impress the foreign direct investment, and have has also been notably strong. And in uh, 2002, right. the FDI in Brazil nearly about double of the 90.6 billion, the highest reading in the decade. So. They have the very important, uh, I mean, areas. I mean, most of or most, uh, it is the three uh, major areas. But uh, if I uh, give a right, so Doctor Sen, what are some of the, the major uh, major sectors that are driving economic cooperation between Pakistan and Brazil? So far, is it? I mean, uh, what we are doing, there is a lot many uh, areas. But so far, is a light, pure, woven cotton house linen and medical instrument but the agriculture is a powerful sector but we can uh, go on uh, which is the uh, annualized rate is 2.37 so it could be from 68.6 uh, million in uh, million in 1995 so it could uh, go on to the other way but uh, there are many other areas which we can earn on but the main important area which we export till in 2000 uh, as i told you in 2021 we haven't uh, export a single penny, but they have exported us uh, for about soya bean is about the 698 and soya bean is very much important. Most of the uh, agriculture product is based on the GMO, so we, we, come, we should come out of the G G GMOs, otherwise we cannot eat anything. Uh, and uh, uh, there is no concept of the organic vegetables around the world now. So uh, raw cotton is also very much important, uh, which is about 31317 uh, and the scrap iron. Uh, iron. And I endorse uh, Dr. Shamsi's point. So, sport and uh, and the medical instrument is the most powerful sector. Why the why Pakistan area and why the foreign uh, office uh, or the board of investment go to Brazil and why they have not uh, discussed that the China is uh, China is uh, I mean the Brazil is going to be his favorite destination uh, very soon and they must have to be the part of this uh, area so that we can, uh, I mean, increase our export right, right. to the so Brazil Sen, and we can have the export about, and import balance. Right. Let's yeah. talk about, uh, in terms of trade balance, uh, what, is, uh, what is the situation between Pakistan and Brazil? And also, uh, are there some preferential uh, trade agreements between Pakistan and Brazil? And how to improve the trade balance uh, when we talk about bilateral cooperation? So, um, I mean, currently, we, uh, I mean, uh, if I see in the economic complexity index, it is about minus 0.55 percent, and uh, 66 in total export is what is, which is 32.2 billion. And the same year, the Brazil ranked 49 in the economic complexity index (ECE), what we call it, is a 0.3 percent, and total is 24 in the total export. So, uh, uh, if I talk about the Brazil relation in an economic term. You're very right, but there is a huge gap. So we have to fill up the gap. And uh, w what we need, the Pakistan and the Brazil have a, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, the, there is a Park Brazil Parliamentary Friendship Group. It can help us. And a meeting of the Brazil a Parliamentary, uh, Pakistan and Brazil Parliamentary Friendship Group with the HEE, uh, uh, His Excellency, o 
Oleto Vereria, the ambassador of the Federative Republic of the Brazil to Pakistan, was held last month in Islamabad. The convener of the group underscored that Pakistan and Brazil enjoyed a friendly, cordial relationship. But uh, there is another uh, respected point, which is Rana Qasim, known while he emphasizes the importance of bilateral and economic right, diplomacy, of course. stressed the needs to have the parliamentary friendship group of the uh, PFG provides the platform of parliamentary exchange, which helps to further strengthen the bilateral relationship. But uh, if, uh, if, if, as you said, that we have the M memorandum of understanding uh, between a very specific issue, we haven't done so far. But that's why we are right. Right. So there is a lot of potential of uh, to increase this uh, bilateral cooperation that. as well. Of course, of course. So, uh, Dr. Shamsi, when we talk about economic cooperation, that remains an important uh, point of bilateral cooperation between the two countries. When we talk about foreign direct investments, how do you see what are some of the sectors in which there is potential for investment? attracting from Brazil and how to create that a conducive environment for investments. Yeah, very important, a very significant point. You see, diplomacy offers endless opportunities. True. Regardless of the distance, culture or uh, any other entity. And in the case of Brazil, the trade and commerce would be a natural phenomena because of a huge population and seventh largest economy. So, Pakistan has the opportunity to go beyond its frontiers, beyond its comfort zone of region because China is already there. True. The BRICS India is having problem at this time because mm -hmm. of the currency swap with the in the uh, BRICS countries. There is a niche at this time. If Pakistani diplomats actively pursue, there is a niche and we can make inroads. The sectors that you asked for, mm. the most important is the agriculture. Right. Because they have a lot of expertise in that. Mm. The raw material they already have. You can attract investment in agriculture because we are expanding. Dr. Shamsi, uh, of course, agriculture is vital uh, for Pakistan as well as for Brazil. So, are there some existing collaborations between both the countries? And also, when we talk about knowledge sharing, of course, Brazil has some advanced technologies as well that we can benefit from. What about those collaborations? They are there already. Um, and that's what Dr. Satan was also hinting mm. at, mm. that it is the bilateral relationship is not enough when you mm. say that the trade imbalance is 0.35 percent mm. or uh, it is 1.6 billion. This is this is peanut. Between two states with the accumulated population of over uh, around 500 million of the two countries, this trade. Uh, figures are minimal. I mean, they they don't even come in any type of discussion as far as the global campus, uh, canvas is concerned. So, we need to make inroads. There are opportunities. There are opportunities in the cultural domain also. Mm -hmm. Music industry of Brazil is very advanced. Of the course. samba, Pakistan film industry and the drama, they, they regularly use their music, mm -hmm. uh, the samba. And we can make a lot of cultural exchanges with them regardless of the distance because I don't subscribe to distance. It is of in the course. south of America. Of if we are going to America, a, we can go to Brazil also. Of course, there is a lot of potential so, when we talk about cultural and sports diplomacy as well. Mm. But when we talk about renewable energy uh, resources, uh, Brazil has made some uh, significant advancements uh, when we talk about renewable energy resources like hy hydropower and other uh, avenues. So, what about collaboration in uh, renewable energy between the two countries? Because, of course, we are in need of uh, uh, energy resources specifically renewable energy resources. That is what I have been um, saying before also that it is we who is to decide mm. that what kind of support do we want from Brazil because that country is very forthcoming. They are very easy going people. They have one window operation in their country and they expect the same from us. Unfortunately, we have not been offered, we have not been able to offer them one window operation as far as the FDIs are concerned. So, how, how can Pakistan explore these opportunities and what about this new special investment uh, 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 council that we keep on talking about that is this going to ease things for the countries that we keep on exploring or diversifying our foreign policy towards? In fact, we do not have to explore. Hmm. These things are already there on the table. 
we just need to pursue them we just need to pursue them actively and with mutual understanding if we offer them facilities for investment in agriculture industry raw material exploration uh, of natural uh, resources you will find them forthcoming because they are expanding economy the because of the brics they are already in the region and they will be very well they will welcome pakistan's initiative if we make the move of course so there there's a lot of potential but uh, dr jaswal when we talk about uh, economic cooperation infrastructure remains a key driver for economic growth and development so uh, how do you see that the infrastructure development between the two countries of course uh, the modes of transportation uh, is very important but keeping in mind the geographical distance uh, what is the potential of collaboration in infrastructure development are are there some joint ventures uh, that uh, uh, that pakistan and brazil can collaborate on i think that <coughs> uh, first of all is that if we talk about the trade naturally the shipping lines is mm. important and pakistan has is very weak in this context mm. we have especially to, maritime is there maritime, potential maritime the shipping line that was a so mercantile ships so pakistan has to improve it because if pakistanis have to plan and invest and uh, do a trade with the distant regions of course she sees the only route for that uh, besides it what the uh, your primary question is that there could be a collaboration or joint investment projects definitely because if you see the brazil's population is 214 million plus and that is a big market for pakistan and pakistan's pharmaceutical industry or pakistan's this for the cellcore industry especially one of these the saucer or the footballs pakistan's sport industry mm. we can go there and invest and we can transport this kind mm. of the things that the brazilians will be interested in similar kind of the thing investment here Secondly, Pakistan is one of the leading states which have been enjoying this. What we call it, uh, uh, I mean that, uh, the, which has been now enjoying this CPEC True. because of the we are a leading member of the BRI project, and definitely, uh, of course, there is a belt and then there is road. Of course, so Pakistan can uh, establish its niche within the belt. or you can see moving from the sea side right and brazil is known for its large scale uh, infrastructure projects as well yeah. so do you see there is potential there for is infrastructure the there is a lot of potential for collaboration there is right. a lot of potential for and in, in can you specify what are the areas in which uh, both countries can collaborate i think that collaborate. small industry small industry is very important even in the, within the small arms industry can hmm. be very attractive and agri business and also and then agriculture industry is very important hmm. and then within this uh, brazilians are very much interested in importing our cotton products so we can also collaborate with that so there is a way if you uh, if there is a will there is a way and definitely there is a lot of potential so that's the reason in recent years if i'm not wrong asan will be going to correct it because we have a more than 1 billion not trade uh, bilateral trade volume as it there so this, such a trade volume we don't have even in our own region with many countries so this way one can look the brazilian as a very potential or attractive economic uh, for a, a country with a economic investment because it's a developing state and then uh, similarly attracting them for in a multi multi dimensional uh, you can say arrangements like culture political education is a big big of thing. course of course that has a huge potential as well but when we uh, talk about uh, different challenges uh, dr sen climate change is one of the key challenges that both countries face and we know that amazon forest is in brazil and this is called lungs of the earth uh, so uh, do you see that both countries are collaborating on climate front as well and also uh, uh, regarding uh, sustainable development as well do you see there is potential or are there some ongoing projects when we talk about paris agreements between both the countries as far as climate is concerned of course this is the individual matter of course every country has to deal with their own climate and own uh, uh, i mean specific climate uh, issues because uh, uh, any powerful country can only help them uh, with the instrument with the technology with other things but they have to think about their self for example if i am in china uh, uh, around me there is all green and they haven't left any single patch of uh, ungreen thing so 
they they create their own environment for uh, for say there are most of the uh, happenings even in the brazil or even in the pakistan there is a heating problem and there is uh, most of the people are suffering from the heat stroke and what what china do is that this time around there is a lot much heat problem over there so what they did i mean they have uh, covering from the uh, uh, on on the sky high uh, i mean uh, i mean temperature atmospheric uh, climatic uh, uh, i mean a uh, temperature control and then they on the uh, surface on the earth they have created the uh, a technology on the uh, on the earth side or the surface side so this is what the independent and uh, and the very much individual side of the climatic uh, cl- uh, climatic issues so uh, brazil have to do that as far as the p- poverty is concerned for of course the brazil is not that powerful country and of course they they are looking forward for the, all those country they have the same uh, policies issue of course and when we talk about south south cooperation there but, is potential right yes uh, but very important thing is that why we are discussing the brazil it is very much important as uh, dr jaspar has very much uh, rightly point out the first 1 billion dollar is Uh, uh, of course uh, sees that it is a potential area but under the economic recovery plan and sifc plan so what we uh, uh, can see the economic trade and investment opportunities so brazil was the first uh, business partner in south america and the two countries trade is uh, 368.7 uh, million worth of goods and service mm. with each other in 2015 so brazil has a lot of business possibilities for pakistan especially in agriculture field which pakistan exporters have uh, haven't taken advantage of yet so uh, i my recommendation towards the saifc plan or the green initiative plan right. they can help us in the agriculture program or green initiative by the pakistan military and uh, of this government of course and so brazil have the trade surplus with the rest of the world for a long time so this is because <laughs> it is easy access to the raw material and dev- uh, right, diverse of labor force and the good position if you allow me one minute more so i just wanted to uh, add one uh, important uh, thing which is the mineral fuel machinery electricity electrical machinery and the vehicles uh, other than the trains were main things that we can brought in this is very much important when i have given uh, to the economic council of the pakistan so that in the new economic recovery plan they can uh, uh, add this area as well because i have searched it a lot so the brazil top 3 products have been uh, the oil seed oily fruit oris sludge and ash and the mineral fuels so from 2006 and 15 trade between the brazil and pakistan was a brazil's favor so the top things that brazil brought from pakistan were the uh, knitted and non knitted clothes cotton and other uh, textiles so this is because more cotton animal and the plant fats right. and o- oil and oil seed uh, oligonus and the food are the being sent abroad so this is the major part and uh, under this economic recovery plan we must have to focus on all these areas so that we can trade in a most better way right there is a lot of potential when we talk about pakistan's relations with brazil we will be talking taking a short break here and when we can come back we will be exploring more avenues of collaboration between both the countries Welcome back. We are talking about Pakistan's relations with Brazil, and when we talk about uh, bilateral cooperation, of course, there is a lot of potential. Uh, but Dr. Shamsi, uh, when we talk about multilateral engagements between both the countries, how do you see what are the avenues in which both countries uh, have collaborated? When we talk about uh, issues of common interest like climate change or some conflicts, how do you see? Yeah, um, when you talk of climate change. i think both the countries are badly affected mm. and taking measures as dr asnan also pointed out the billion tree tsunami they can be very helpful because they have the experience uh, of uh, agriculture and vegetation one area that we have not discussed perhaps until this time is the livestock sure. cooperation mm. there is a huge market because of the big population pakistan offers a great opportunity of halal food expert 
halal meat mm -hmm. export to uh, Brazil. This is one area. Then secondly, the uh, Brazil was hit very hard um, during the pandemic and they lost a lot, lot of uh, mm -hmm. precious mm -hmm. lives. And uh, they can learn a lot from Pakistan's right. experience in, in that regard. And Pakistan can learn from Brazil's pharmaceutical sector as Absolutely. well, of course. There's a lot of potential, but uh, let's talk about multilateral engagement between uh, both the countries. Of course, there are a number of uh, uh, international uh, platforms or organizations uh, uh, at which both, me uh, both countries are member of. So uh, how do you see that both countries maybe can align their foreign policies for a common agenda? What are some of those areas? Pakistan has been um, able to be in line, be in sync with Brazil's foreign policy as far as the UN expansion, UN Security Council expansion is concerned. Then Brazil's view on Kashmir hmm. also been uh, very favorable. Hmm. Can then you elaborate on that when we talk about UN and of course WTO both countries are member of and how BRICS inclusion, uh, how Brazil's inclusion in BRICS uh, may be affected uh, uh, its bilateral ties with Pakistan? Actually it has not. It has offered actually the opportunities hmm. for Pakistan. Right. BRICS offers a lot of opportunities as I said in my previous part that um, India is weakening at this stage because of it is not agreeing to uh, common currency in BRICS. Moreover, uh, you have uh, China over there and Russia over there and they are very favorable to Pakistan in the SEO also. So, there is lot of opportunity as far as multilateral engagements are concerned because Brazil is the largest country of the continent um, in South America. And if you have inroads as far as the business, commerce, trade or political engagement with the largest country of the region, then the mushrooming effect also takes place and you have inroads to the relatively smaller countries of that region. And Argentina by no means is a small country. Of However, course. Chile is there, Ecuador is there and there are so many other countries where you can make inroads if you have a foothold in Brazil as far as trade and commerce is concerned, political engagement is concerned, this diplomatic overtures are concerned and foreign direct investment either from your side into their country hmm. or from their side into your country. As I mentioned the livestock, there is lot of opportunity as far as exporting the leather goods also True. because they are very fond of uh, using the leather goods and Pakistan does offer this opportunity. Medical instruments as you mentioned, there is a huge market, football we have already discussed a lot, okay. Right. So there are there, lot there, of opportunities, there, there it of is up to us. Of course, of course and when we talk about multilateral cooperation, we know that Brazil has uh, you know actively involved in South-South cooperation. So do you think uh, there is potential for Pakistan to leverage uh, Brazil's experience to uh, uh, develop its own relations with other uh, developing countries when we talk about G77 and other avenues like that? In fact, Pakistan has always been very active as far as the diplomatic front is concerned. Mm. Unfortunately, we do not pursue that. We make inroads, I mean in the last 75 years, if you see we, we have relationship with the, at least over 180 countries. But on the result sheet, we see that we have not been able to progress. Mm. This could be because of the wrong priorities of the successive governments or non pursuance of uh, our objectives. That is where we have been erratic, otherwise opportunities have always been there. And challenges, obviously, challenges offer opportunities. If we can seize those opportunities and through this forum of game changer, if I can just propose that please consolidate the gains you have made in the last three years, let us say with Brazil itself, hmm. Hmm. okay? Consolidate it and then proceed further. Right. Consolidate one aspect. Let us pick up trade and uh, commerce first, agriculture second, industrial development exploration of natural resources, cooperation on uh, climate change, uh, the exporting of sports goods, medical uh, uh, appliances, consolidate them of course. and make progress and offer them these things that they come and do the investment in your industrial zone as uh, professors have pointed out, CPAC offers a huge opportunity. We are building lot of uh, economic zones and they can come and invest 
if they do not want to have a direct import of sports goods or medical appliances, they can come and set up their own industry over here, of manufacture course, them, and that is and tell them. To, of, of course, we, that we is, are willing to offer them. Of course, there is a lot of potential, and that would be uh, creating FDI for Pakistan as well. Absolutely. Uh, so, Dr. Jaspal, when we talk about co cooperation, of course, education plays an important role in fostering, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 important relations between countries. So, how do you see uh, the exchange of uh, exchange of educational uh, programs or students uh, between the two countries? What is the potential, and are there some programs going on when we talk about bilateral uh, ties? I think that at the moment, uh, our educational cooperation with, with Brazil is not very impressive. Mm -hmm. But there is a potential, and one uh, both states can work together on it, and we can exchange the students and develop a universities cooperation. But as a being a distant state, and both states are developing state because Pakistani inst education institutions were more focusing on the developed world. Mm. So there's a time that we can start focusing on the Brazil or like countries which are a big market for our students and for right. their students here. So there's potential for sports uh, diplomacy sports when we diplomacy. talk about cultural exchange. But uh, it's a uh, from the very beginning, we are missing very important area where Pakistan and Brazil can tap, and that is tourism. Of Pakistanis course. have been traveling a lot. They want to have a good tourism, and Pakistan itself is a very good, and it's very attractive for the tourists, starting from the K2 mountains, going to the deserts, and they see, uh, you can say, our beaches. So definitely, Pakistan is, will be a very attractive for the Brazilian tourism. Tourism. Of course, so and, and vice versa. Vice versa, because and uh, that can be because many Pakistani wanted to explore the Latin America or the South America, or if they are traveling to the Canada or you can say in the Atlantic side. So they definitely, it will be a good attractive place. For of Pakistan. course, there is a lot of potential, but when we talk about bilateral ties, defense cooperation remains an important component of that. Mm -hmm. So how do you, uh, uh, you know, see the current collaboration, uh, specifically in defense sector between both the countries? Uh, I think Are that yes, uh, yes, this is very important. That when we were purchasing this surface to air small uh, missiles from the Brazil, at that time India protested a lot, but Brazilians didn't. You can say, agree with them, and the deal was matured. Similarly, there are, as Shamsa was pointing out earlier, and he knows better than me on this, that the small planes, Brazilians are good in making the small, short, uh, small planes or aircraft. So, in this context, well, we can get uh, assistance from them, or we can work together. Our camera is well doing well, and Brazilians have definitely have an interest in it. Mm -hmm. That why not our aeronautical and Engineers can work together and work on a similar or joint project. Right. There is a potential. Of for course, it. and when we talk about defense cooperation, of course, cyber security is also important uh, because Brazil is pretty advanced when we talk about cyber security issues as well. So, do you think there is potential for maybe knowledge sharing or uh, a, a getting expertise from Brazil uh, in that sector? I think that the, we have to take into account that when we talk about cyber domain, cyber domain is a domain without any borders. So in the cyber domains, you need a like-minded countries which can cooperate with you in order to establish some kind of transnational approach mm. you know, to overcome cyber crimes. Cyber is a new battlefield area, but at the same time, cyber is a very benign area for us, or it could uh, have a also merits. So in this context, as you pointed out, that one uh, we need to cooperate with the Brazilians because cyber has now making us a right. very much a, a uh, part of each community or a joint sort of thing, there's no distances in that. So, of course, we can work from their good practices, of especially how to deal with the cyber crime. Right. So, there's a lot of potential when we talk about cooperation uh, between both the countries. Uh, so, lastly, when we conclude this program, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hassan, uh, uh, kindly tell us how do you see the future trajectory of relations between Pakistan and Brazil? Under the economic recovery plan, I would see, and uh, that's why we are, are doing this program. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward for the lot of, uh, uh, I mean, bilateral trade, and more focus area for, uh, for example, uh, most of the area you have discussed with Dr. Jaspal, uh, he's very rightly said that uh, we have the most uh, more potential than the Bra Brazil in the education area, in the tourism, and in the other areas. So we can collaborate in the many areas. So we can. Because their, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, financial areas uh, or the economic uh, values or economic uh, standards are not so powerful. So we, this is the point. And uh, after the uh, geographical, uh, I mean, uh, dis discrimination after the China this and the America. So the, 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 the Bra Brazil is the new destination. So we have to work along with the, alongside with the China, and then we can uh, put our 
most of the focus in brazil so that it is a i mean better situation it is a south american uh, area so it is not right. about i mean this is our psychology the wherever the dollar is there so our pakistani goes there so this is not ab- uh, about the uh, i mean we have to find out the gap so the biggest of gap course. is brazil now and we have to focus on uh, uh, as much as we can go on and there are lot many areas as dr, dr. shamsi pointed out so we can have uh, a lot many things we can do but of so course. far we haven't There's done anything potential. that's why of we course. are focusing on that we have to focus on the brazil Right. So, of course, there is a lot of potential. So, lastly, uh, uh, Dr. Shamsi, how do you see the future prospects of relations between Pakistan and Brazil? And what are some of the specific sectors on which Pakistan should be focusing on to collaborate more with Brazil? Yeah, um, as, as I said before, that there is a huge potential because the two countries are uh, big in population, mm. developing economies, and a lot of potential as far as the... Um, climate, soil, agriculture, industry and concern. But a point that you asked uh, in your previous question to Dr. Saab uh, was about the defense cooperation. Um, Brazil has a very advanced defense industry. It has something like 220 mm-hmm. companies around 85 countries in the world. Pakistan has collaborated, especially Pakistan Air Force has collaborated with uh, Brazil. Um, they build uh, medium uh, size uh, aeroplanes. Uh, their uh, air defense system is very advanced. Their surface to air missile systems mm. are very advanced. And there is a huge cooperation uh, gap uh, that is needed to be filled. So that is why I have been saying that there is a possibility that if Pakistan, Pakistan diplomats make inroads into Brazil, mm. which is the largest uh, country Uh, in the southern, um, second largest in the southern hemisphere and uh, in the South America the largest, then the countries bordering Brazil would also be able to explode like Argentina, Ecuador and Chile etc. It will open new avenues for Pakistan. New avenues because Brazil is not a new avenue for Pakistan. Of course. course. The cooperation had been there for a very long time. We only need to consolidate them pursue them. So, persistence and perseverance is very important as far as the diplomacy is concerned Mm. and we need to do that. If we want to grow our economic cooperation with a country like Brazil which is very diverse, very dynamic and because of the BRICS very important for us. Of course. Thank you very much, Dr. Ziyad Shamsi, for joining us in today's program. Thank you very much, Dr. Zafar Nafaz Jaspal, for being with us in today's program. Thank you very much, Dr. Stan Javed, for joining us in today's program. Of course, in today's program, we explored the multifaceted relations between Pakistan and Brazil. When we talk about potential, of course, there is a huge potential in different sectors, uh, specifically when we talk about agricultural sector, pharmaceuticals, and there's a lot that needs to be explored. Of course, uh, both both countries uh, are collaborating in certain sectors, uh, but there's a lot of potential where both countries need to focus uh, to build an enduring relationship. That's all from Game Changer tonight. Take care. Allah Hafiz.